Welcome back to Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinidis and you're watching BKM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. On Monday, the Biden administration announced it is approving the major willow oil project on Alaska's petroleum-rich North Slope. This approval is a significant climate decision for the administration that had pledged to move away from fossil fuels. Climate activists are outraged, saying if Biden allows the oil company Con ConocoPhillips to move forward with the drilling plan, it would break Biden's campaign promise to stop new oil drilling on public lands. By the administration's own estimates, the project would generate enough oil to release 9.2 million metric tons of planet warming carbon pollution a year. On the other hand, some view the approval as a victory as the drilling venture is a much needed new source of revenue and jobs for the remote region. Biden's Willow plan would allow three drill sites initially, which project developer ConocoPhillips has said would include about 219 total wells. The project will cover 68,000 fewer acres than what ConocoPhillips was initially seeking, as Biden's administration said it would bar or limit drilling in some areas of Alaska and the Arctic Ocean. The administration's decision is not likely to be the last word, with litigation expected from environmental groups. On Monday, President Joe Biden emphasizes that the American banking system remains safe after Silicon Valley Bank and New York's Signature Bank collapse. On Friday, the California-based bank, Silicon Valley Bank, a lender to some of the biggest names in the technology world, became the largest bank to fail since the 2008 financial crisis. Massachusetts branches of the SVB were closed last Friday after the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation seized the assets. In a statement, FDIC officials said they would give all insured depositors full access to their insured deposits this week. The bank was the 16th largest in the country and had $209 billion in assets and $175.4 billion in deposits at the time of failure. Following SVB's failure, the New York Department of Financial Services announced Sunday that it has taken possession of Signature Bank and appointed the FDIC as the bank's receiver. The New York Financial Institution, which has a big real estate lending business that had recently made it play to win cryptocurrency deposits, made the decision to close its doors Sunday, after regula regulators said that keeping the bank open could threaten the stability of the entire financial system. At more than $110 billion in assets, Signature Bank is the third largest bank failure in U.S. history. In a speech announced Sunday night, Biden explained what he has instructed his administration to do to protect small businesses and workers in the wake of regulator shutdowns of both Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. His instructions include the backstopping of depositors, depositors' funds, making sure taxpayers are not on, on the hook for these moves, holding those responsible accountable, and declining to extend relief to investors of Silicon Valley Bank. Brigham and Women's Hospital announced promising research about a new drug that could combat COVID-19 and other inflammatory diseases. Researchers at the Brigham have tested a type of monoclonal antibody given through the nose that is designed to stimulate anti-inflammatory cells in the body and could hopefully work against any coronavirus variant. They found that when the drug was given daily to 39 patients with COVID-19 over 10 days, that it dampened the inflammatory response to the virus and decreased lung inflammation without significant side effects. They also found that the drug might be helpful in multiple sclerosis by reducing brain inflammation. The research team now plans to conduct larger trials in patients with long COVID, MS, and other conditions such as Alzheimer's disease. Although the state is not reporting daily COVID-19 health trends anymore, the Mass DPH is still monitoring and reporting health trends on a weekly basis. On March 9th, newly released metrics show that over 57,000 molecular tests were conducted and 2,703 new positive cases were reported in the last week. As of March 7th, 152 people are hospitalized in Massachusetts and 53 are in the ICU. 
61 new deaths were also recorded in the last seven days. The town of Branchy also continues to monitor COVID data from the state. The town hall hasn't reported any new positive cases in the last week. The town hall website currently shows a total of 11,539 positive cases since the start of the pandemic. There have been no new fatalities reported in 10 months, keeping Braintree's total deaths at 137. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more after the break. If you're 50 or older, it's important to stay up to date on COVID vaccines. Boosters greatly reduce your chance of severe illness, hospitalization, and death, and are an important defense. Even if you've already had COVID, schedule your appointment today at mass.gov slash COVID booster. Welcome back. A 19-year-old was arrested last week in Boston in connection with a crash that killed Michael Wojdag, who was driving with his wife and child on Route I-93 last month. Had Ween's Quetant from Rosendale is accused of driving a black 2019 Honda Civic at speeds reaching 120 miles per hour, just seconds before his vehicle struck the family's black 2018 Chevrolet Tahoe SUV. The crash occurred on the northbound side of the Interstate 93 in Braintree at approximately 9 p.m. on February 19th. State police say preliminary analysis indicates that Quitant was racing another car when his vehicle struck the passenger side of the SUV. Both vehicles went off the road and Wajdag was ejected and killed. Wajdag's wife and 14-year-old son were injured in the crash and taken to a hospital. State police said Quitant faces charges including manslaughter, motor vehicle homicide by negligent operation, reckless operation of a motor vehicle, racing a motor vehicle, and witness intimidation. He was arrested at his home last Wednesday and arraigned and held on $25,000 cash bail. State police said they are continuing the investigation to identify the driver who was racing Quitant. The Braintree Chamber of Commerce has announced a new leader for 2023. Denver Gibbs, who is the president and CEO of Gibbs Software Solutions, was recently elected as the chairperson for the chamber. He will now work towards setting an agenda for the board moving forward. Gibbs has been a board member at the chamber since October 2021. He's also served as the Rotary International President and as a board member of South Shore Stars. Gibbs in a statement said, quote, It is an honor to be named chair of the Braintree Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber has long been an active and forceful advocate for the business community, providing valuable support to businesses of all sizes within Braintree. I, took for, I look forward to assisting in its continued growth." End quote. The Delory Field at Watson Park, used, to, used by the East Braintree Little League, will be getting a makeover this summer. Tuesday night, the Town Council approved spending over $700,000 in Community Preservation Act money to, to remake both the playing field and the spectator areas. The project will include a new grass playing surface with irrigation and drainage, as well as replacing the fence and moving it 20 feet back from home plate, bringing the field to regulation size for Little League tournament play and adding new dugouts, bleachers, a scoreboard, and a paved walkway around the field. In the past, neighbors have complained about parking along Gordon Road and side streets during Little League play. This work will result in reduction of the number of spaces in the adjacent parking lot and in turn will most likely cause even more people forced to park on nearby streets. District 3 Town Councilor Elizabeth Maglio, who represents the area, said in addition to parking complaints, people also don't want to see their park paved, but would rather see better police enforcement and signs directing spectators to nearby off-street parking. Mayor Kokora said work on the field will begin after this Little League season and should be completed by opening day in 2024. The Braintree Recreation Department has announced their summer programs and upcoming activities. Programs this year include the Sports Clinic for children ages 8 to 13, Kiddos Clinics for children ages 5 to 7, the Field Trip Clinic for ages 8 to 13, the Summertime Special Needs Day Activity Program, and the Neighborhood Organized Play. 
Also this summer, the free family movie nights will be held on Thursday, July 13th and Thursday, July 20th at French's Common. In addition, the Nelson Chin Summer Concert Series, sponsored by America Chorus and Braintree Electric Light Department, will begin its seven-week series on Tuesday, June 27th. The concerts held at Sunset Lake will take place every Tuesday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. starting June 27th and ending August 8th. Braintree Recreation also announced Sunset Lake will, be, will, begin, will begin being staffed with lifeguards on June 24th. And the Peterson Splash Pad at Watson Park will be open daily from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. starting July 1st. Registration for summer programs will open Monday, April 3rd. For more information, you can visit braintreema.myrec.com or email Chris Griffin at cgriffin at braintreema.com. Thanks for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. Every home needs a basic emergency supply kit. It should meet the unique needs of the people who live there. Your kit doesn't have to cost a lot. You probably already have many of these supplies, and you can get others at a discount store. Visit mass.gov slash be prepared. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now here's more in local news. Last Friday, the MBTA announced that speed restrictions on sections of several trolley and subway lines had been lifted. This follows the announcement late on Thursday announcing immediate speed restrictions as a result of findings by the Department of Public Utilities. Officials learned proper documentation about track inspection tests conducted last month was missing. The DPU serves as the designated state agency responsible for safety oversight of the T. MBTA Interim General Manager Jeffrey Gonville said in a statement last Friday that, quote, Global speed restrictions were lifted on all lines except the Green and Mattapan lines. We now have in place block speed restrictions on red, blue, and orange lines and areas that have not been inspected or where track conditions do not permit normal teams." End quote. Gonville said globally across the system, there were documentation inconsistencies and some areas in which the documentation did not exist. The MBTA acknowledged the issues will cause travel delays and asked riders to be patient as the inspections continue. Ronald Esther Jr., Chief Safety Officer of the MBTA, said they are working with the DPU and have identified a series of immediate actions that, once corrected, will make the system safer and more reliable. The MBTA has been operating on a reduced schedule due to safety concerns flagged by the federal government. Last week, U.S. Representative Bill Keating ce celebrated the inclusion of an initial $350 million in President Biden's 2024 federal budget for the replacement of the 90-year-old Sagamore and Bourne bridges. Keating said, quote, having the president himself make this a priority is significant, end quote. That $350 million would be part of an overall com commitment of $600 million along with a legislative proposal to allow the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to transfer those funds and ownership of the bridges to the state, which would be responsible for their future operation and maintenance and maintenance. Estimates for the bridge project have risen to around $4 billion, with construction beginning potentially in 2026. Keating, who lives in Bourne, said that the project hit a roadblock when the federal government rejected two bids by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to secure more than $1 billion. Keating said another key development is that Governor Maura Healey has indicated a major commitment to the project, similar to the federal government. Members of the Quincy Education Association rallied outside of Quincy City Hall on Thursday afternoon as contract negotiations with the school committee and the Quincy Education Association Union have been ongoing since last June. About 100 teachers showed up to the rally on the Hancock Adams Common in front of City Hall to publicly respond to what the union called, quote, misleading and inaccurate statements regarding the contract negotiations, end quote. Made by Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch and Quincy School Committee Vice Chair Frank Santoro in a letter, in a letter sent to parents and staff. Supporters carried signs that read, Fair Contract Now, Mayor Koch raised the ceiling, and what about our future? 
A virtual community meeting was held later that night, during which Quincy Education Association President Gail Carvalho and union leaders presented a timeline of negotiations and explained the mediation process. Carvalho said teachers are hoping for equitable solutions to the long-standing disagreements over a contract. Last week, the city asked the state to step in to help mediate a deal with the teachers union after a 16th bargaining session on March 3rd that failed to produce an agreement. In the letter, Mayor Koch said the city has asked the state to assign a third-party mediator to assist both sides in future bargaining sessions. Sessions have been scheduled for March 16th, 23rd, and the 27th. St. Patty's Day is just around the corner. Here are a few ways to celebrate. Situate will host the South Shore's largest St. Patrick's Day parade on March 19th. Situate resident Ed Kelly, who has organized the day's festivities for more than 20 years, said attendees can expect an exciting array of sights and sounds, including floats sponsored by local businesses and neighborhood groups, two pipe and drum bands, and nine other musical acts. The roughly two-mile route from the Old Gates Middle School to the Situate Harbor Community Center on Jericho Road will take place on Sunday, March 19th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. For more information on Situate's annual, annual St. Patrick's Day Parade, you can visit weloveparade.com. The annual Boston St. Patrick's Day Parade will take place in South Boston, the city's predominantly Irish-American neighborhood, on Sunday, March 19th, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. The parade has been a tradition in South Boston for more than 110 years. Attendees can enjoy various marching bands, dancers, elaborate floats, police and army contingents, novelty vehicles, and a general green atmosphere. The route for the 2023 St. Patrick's Day Parade begins at the Broadway T Station and ends at Andrew Square. For more information, you can visit the bostoncalendar.com or bostondiscoveryguide.com. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. Want a year of no cost birth control with just one trip to the pharmacy? Access, a Massachusetts law, can make it easier. Get more control over your birth control. Find out if you're covered. Learn more at mass.gov slash birth control. Welcome back to Braintree Today. This week in entertainment, we have two movies to celebrate Women's History Month and a newly released movie currently playing in theaters. First in Entertainment, This Changes Everything is a documentary film which focuses on actresses and female filmmakers. The women discuss gender discrimination in the media and entertainment industry while sharing their variety of stories about their experiences. Meryl Streep, Sandra, Sandra Oh, Rashida Jones, and Reese Witherspoon are just a few of the actresses who can be seen in the documentary. This Changes Everything can be watched now on Netflix or Amazon Prime. Next in Entertainment, Reversing Roe is a documentary film that focuses on the decade-long political campaign to try and overturn Roe v. Wade. The documentary interviews abortion rights supporters and opponents. Through the interviews, the film analyzes the abortion laws in the U.S. and the effects of the Roe v. Wade case. Reversing Roe can be seen now only on Netflix. And finally in entertainment, Scream 6 follows up with the four survivors of the last film who left their hometown of Woodboro behind for a fresh start in New York City. The survivors find themselves again in a fight for their lives as a new killer embarks on a bloody rampage. The film was released on Friday, March 10th and has already set a new record for the franchise box office record. Scream 6 can be seen now only in theaters. That'll do it for news today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV on Braintree to <laughs> My God, wow. I'm so sorry. I'll redo the last part. God. That was totally my bad. <clears throat> That'll do it for news today. I'm Martha Constantinides, and thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.